All right, so day two here in Milan now, we are actually at the host conference. We've seen a lot of product releases in the last week or so in anticipation of this show. So let's go see what we can find on the floor to take a look at and showcase for you guys. The first area we stopped in at was Latte Art Factory. This is a German company that has created a pretty innovative new way of texturing milk that actually won an award at the conference. Instead of requiring constant attention from a very skilled barista, it is instead a pressurized air system that produces very precise cold or hot foam at a variety of textures. The whole concept is based around the fact that this machine can be creating your milk, leaving you free to do a variety of other tasks around the cafe. Pretty cool. Next up on the list, we visited the Malconic stand to get some hands-on time with the new EK Omnia. If you haven't already watched our video on the release party that we attended for this new grinder, absolutely be sure to check out that video. It was a super cool experience. But what we wanted to get hands-on with was the new digital display, and what we saw was pretty impressive. Not only is it just good looking and it has the advertised timed doses and recipes, but what was really cool is we discovered that the grind setting was actually mechanically changing on its own, which is just so darn cool to watch as you flip between the recipes. All right, we are here with Eureka, and we just got a very in-depth tour of their entire booth because, holy smokes, they are releasing a lot of new stuff. We actually just got our first Eureka grinders in the studio recently, and they're about to change the whole lineup again. So, pros and cons there, but let's go through what new things they have, starting with the 065 all-purpose. So they're starting to put larger 65 millimeter burrs into their grinders now, this one being a single dose designated by the zero. Um, next up, we have an all-purpose. You'll see a lot of these also have a much larger grind dial on them. That also includes a rotation counter, which I haven't seen before, but makes total sense. I know a lot of people used to complain about the smaller dials on the Specialita. We now have a bigger dial, with very clear markings, which is cool. And as you probably guessed, the all-purpose is meant for all types of brewing. It has a more general burr set in there. After that, we have the brew. All of these are grind by weight, except for the single dose, of course. On the brew, um, we just have standard, meant for brewing, not necessarily an espresso burr set on there. And then finally, if we come this way, what I think is probably the most interesting innovation in their home lineup is the inclusion of these new screens. So you can change your actual burr gap and it will show you what burr gap you are at. So whether you're at a mocha pot setting, an espresso setting, wherever you are in the range, and it'll give you rough starting points, but you're able to repeat the same setting really, really accurately, which is cool. And then obviously you set up all your timed dosing and other things using this display as well. So that's really cool to see. And it's quite reminiscent of what we just saw in the new EK from Malkonig, but this is not a massively expensive commercial grinder. This is coming for home use, and that's really interesting because you also get the recipe functionality. So you can set a burr gap and a timed dose for a specific coffee, and it will help you recreate that by telling you what grind setting to go to and automatically selecting the timed dose. So really interesting stuff on the special leader line. We also visited their more pro grinders, which in addition to having some slightly improved finishes and many of the features of the grinders we just looked at, they are also leaning into the fact that different people want different burr styles. I think a lot of people think of Eureka and they think of classic Italian espresso. They are now branching out and they have a variety of burrs for their pro grinders. So probably the biggest announcement from Eureka is most people think Eureka, they think grinders. They have just released their first espresso machines. So there's four models, four different tiers. Essentially we have a base model, no PID, vibratory pump. We have vibratory pump with PID. And then we have the same thing, but with rotary pumps. So you can have a rotary pump with no PID, and you can have a rotary pump with a PID. So I kind of like what they're doing. They have one or two tiers, two model lines, PID, no PID, and then vibratory and rotary in each of those. They're nice. They are heat exchangers. They're not dual boilers. And they're really leaning into, obviously, the aesthetics. Um, Eureka has lots and lots of colors, and they're hoping to match these side panels with those colors. So if we take a look at the red one over there, you can see that there's red finishes, there's black, there's stainless, there's wood, um, and they're all matching. So quite interesting to see the price point these will be coming in at, but Eureka's really stepping up their game to release an espresso machine is absolutely no small feat. So very curious to try these out. 
They also have a new hand grinder, which looked pretty nice. I personally liked the white catch cup, as well as a grinder that appears to be a direct competitor to the fellow Ode. And of course, we looked at a bit of eye candy. There were some prototype machines on the stand. This one just looked so darn cool. Staying in the vein of grinders, we then went over to La Marzocco to take a look at their new Pico. The aesthetics of this one have been very divisive online. I myself am still a bit on the fence, but what I do know is that seeing it in person did sway me a bit more towards the liking it side. The build quality on this thing is just as you would expect, so, so darn solid, and the looks really did fit in with the rest of the La Marzocco gear. We also stopped by the Escaso booth because I know a lot of people are interested in the Escaso Steel Duo Plus that just came out with its beautiful new larger metals and wood steam knob, as well as a few other changes to both the drip tray grate, the fact that it comes with a competition level shower screen now, and the fact that it comes with both a bottomless and a dual spouted portafilter. So those are the main changes if you are curious about that machine. And we also looked at their new grinder. I'm not sure if it's going to be very competitive functionally, but if you're into matching gear, it definitely suits the brand. Next up, we quickly stopped at Lelite. I just had to point out these mustard yellow Biancas, which looked awesome, before heading over to Vittoria Arduino to take a look at their new E1 Prima Pro. The E1 has always been a technologically advanced machine, but now they've added a touchscreen. I'm not a huge fan of the looks, but it definitely improved the functionality. They've got some pretty neat stuff in there, including a degassing phase, as well as what they are calling Pure Brew, which essentially allows you to do pour over on your E1, which is really, really cool and can be adjusted in the recipe sense through that touchscreen. They also did a quick demo of their Easy Cream system, which is obviously more targeted at cafes, but for an automatic steamer, it looked like a pretty compelling system. Now, before we carry on talking about gear, we have to talk about the people, because it was so nice to meet everyone who I had a chance to chat with. I completely embarrassed myself in front of Barista Benji with some latte art. I should have stuck around for a lesson. I finally linked up with Alex from Fellow, who I've been talking to online now for years, but never actually shook hands with. He was brewing at Loveramics with some beautifully colored new stag EKG kettles, and I ran into this guy named Lance. I think he has a YouTube channel of some kind, but he was super nice to chat with. In all seriousness, Lance, it was really nice to meet you, and really nice to meet everyone who I met at the conference. Also, a quick shout out to the folks at Eureka. We'll be seeing a lot more of their products on the channel soon. Getting back to the gear, we also stopped at IMS and e &B Labs to take a look at some of their new baskets. They have the Big Bang, everyone's getting in on the precision basket game, but what I found more exciting was their all-in-one basket that allows you to do pour-over style drinks on any espresso machine thanks to its fine mesh base, which is really neat and I would love to try out. They also had a beautiful looking puck screen, which the best part about it was that it comes with a little magnet so you can pick it out without burning your fingers. And we finally get to see, in collaboration with Mazer and their new Philos, the first actual physical peek at the Meticulous machine. I've been trying to get my hands on these for one heck of a long time, and now I kind of get run of the mill on this one. Looks very interesting. Obviously we have the built-in scale and this whole automated piston design that they've been teasing that I think is really just kind of genius. There's also all the pressure profiling capabilities that we've seen and really like on the Decent machine, but this is obviously coming in at a much lower price point. So it's all gonna be able to be controlled by an external tablet, or it can run all on its own. I really like this little display up here. It just seems like a super slick package. I still think this has the potential to be one of the top machines if we ever get our hands on it. The interface is actually very smooth. That's cool to see. Also just sitting on the same stand was the Weber Moonraker, which I must admit is absolutely beautiful despite the astronomical price, as well as the new B&H WDT tool. As mentioned, this stand was actually owned by Mazer, whose most exciting new release is the Philos, which is being marketed as a light commercial grinder, which you could also put in the home. It felt absolutely rock solid as you would expect. I'm excited to see some reviews on it. On our way out the door, we had to pop by San Remo just to do some window shopping. These things are absolutely beautiful, and I never really noticed this leather detailing on the side. 
and in the same vein, of course, we had to stop at Slayer. I've never actually interacted with a Slayer machine in person, but they are beautiful in real life as you would expect. I should have stuck around and bargained for a review unit. All right, that is it for a very hectic three hours at host. Absolutely not enough time to see everything we would need days, but I wanted to just say a big thank you to everyone who we were able to visit and chat with, and I hope you guys appreciated seeing some of the new products in the flesh. It was really fun to see a lot of those new products, be able to touch them, move them, especially the new EK Omnia and all of those new products from Eureka. We spent most of our time at the Eureka booth. So again, thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you back at home.